thank you for joining us and for being part of this very important discussion and um, and very important opportunity to critically think about um, strategies as we believe can um, honestly and sincerely engage young people in being part of leading change and uh, affecting the change at systemic and uh, institutional levels. So with that, a uh, big thank you and a, a welcome to everyone. And I shall invite Vanessa to and Philo, who will start to walk us through the, the first, next, and, and important steps. Thank you. And big welcome to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Ash. Good morning or afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're doing well and staying safe during this pandemic. This is Vanessa Hernandez, Pop Youth Mentor from the Pop Movement. Welcome to this e-workshop, Youth Leadership Development, Development for SDGs and Climate Action in the Context of COVID-19, organized by the Pop Movement and the WSDF with the World Academy of Art and Science and United Nations Office at Geneva during the global leadership in the 21st century. We would like to share um, some indications before we start. Kindly, we would like to ask all the participants to keep their microphones closed. Whenever it's your turn to participate, please unmute your microphone. If during the presentation, there's any comments or questions, please, I would like to invite you to share them in the Zoom chat, indicating an email address so we can um, answer them during or after the session. For those that are following up on Facebook Live, please leave us your questions and comments with an email and we will try to solve it during and after the workshop. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Ash, for, for your welcome and for the opening to this workshop. I would like um, to introduce everybody uh, about the pop movement and to talk to you about what it is. So the Protective of Branded Movement is an organization that aims to empower the youth to have active participation in addressing issues of climate change faced by our planet. It's a networking platform that encourages young people to take the lead on climate action worldwide. If you want to know more about Pop Movement or WSDF, we are going to share the links in the chat, in the Zoom chat, so you can know more and follow us on social media if you are interested in. Thank you, everyone. I know that everyone is like really, really excited for being part of this workshop. Thank you for your time and thank you for being here. It's great to see that um, there, we are, have a lot of people from different countries. And I know you are here because you want to make a change. So let's enjoy the maximum of this workshop and benefit from others. This workshop aims to give the opportunity to jump leaders to collectively develop transformative strategies that can be implemented to solve challenges for climate youth leadership under COVID-19 situation. We will encourage young people to analyze how COVID-19 situation can be an opportunity for effective leadership and progression of SDGs. In this workshop, we will go to breakout rooms to discuss under some key questions that we are going to give more indications after our self-introduction. I would like to ask everybody to know more about each other. If you can share with us your name, country, and a word that describes what you have learned under COVID-19 situation. Once you finish to, to let us know this information, please pass the word to someone else. So I will start. So hello everybody, I'm Vanessa Hernandez from Mexico. And something that I have learned under the COVID-19 situation is the importance of mental health. I pass the word to Anna Hanahausen. Thank you, Vanessa. Hi, I'm Anna Hanahausen from Mexico City too. And one word that describes my COVID situation is patience. I have developed patience. <laughs> I pass the word on to Jesus Fernandez. Hi, this is Jesus Fernandez from Mexico, but I'm living in the north of Mexico. Um, uh, what I'll learn about this pandemic is that uh, the strongest united of, with our friends and with the family is so important. It doesn't matter the distance. 
I want to share the next turn to Summer. Hi, my name is Summer. I'm from California and something I've learned more about during this pandemic is collaboration. Um, I'll pass it on to Susana Delgado. Hi, sorry for uh, the lack of video, but I'm struggling a little bit. Well, my name is Susana Delgado. Uh, I'm from Mexico too, uh, from Durango. And I think the word that describes my COVID situation is creativity, a lot of creativity. I pass the, the voice to Carol Moreno. Moreno. Thank you, Susana. Uh, good evening, good morning, everyone. Well, uh, my name is Carol Moreno. I'm from Durango, Mexico. And the situation that describes my, well, my current situation now in, in, in the COVID uh, times is to be more in touch with my family and with myself. I pass the word to uh, Raul. Uh, well, hello, my name is Raul. I'm from Durango, Mexico too. And one word that I could, that could describe my, uh, my lockdown should be dedication because without dedication, we could not be here. So uh, I pass the word to Camila. Hello everybody. It's really nice to meet you and see you all safe and healthy. My name is Camila. I am from Mexico City. And one thing I've learned during the COVID pandemic is resilience. I pass the word to Kamal. Hello everyone, this is Komal. I'm from Delhi, India. And the one thing which I learned during this pandemic is not to hold and everything will pass soon. So I will pass this to Leonie Bizovetti. Hi, good morning. I'm Leonie Wizawadi. I'm from New York City, but I'm currently in Austria. And one thing I've learned during the pandemic is to enjoy the little things like going on walks, spending time with my dog. Sorry, I passed the word to Olivia N. <laughs> Hi, my name's Olivia. I'm from New York as well. And one thing I've learned during the pandemic is definitely the importance of a routine um, just to help like pass the time. And I will pass it to, uh, excuse me if I mess up how you say it, but Gitika Pau. Uh, yeah, Olivia, that's correct. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Gitika Paul, uh, and uh, one I'm from Chennai, India. The one thing that I learned the most during the situation is being compassionate towards everyone around. Like you never know what they are going through, so be just compassionate towards them. And I would pass it to Purnima Burman. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Purnima uh, from India. And the one thing that I learned was uh, time managing and be kind to others. And um, I pass it on to uh, Philo. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Philo. I'm from the south of India. Uh, the one thing I learned during this pandemic is the importance of staying away and taking a break from technology. I pass it on to Avantika Subramanian. Hi, this is Avantika. Uh, I'm a I'm a admin of Was, and one thing I learned uh, from this uh, COVID-19 is to utilize the opportunities through technology, um, learn more, uh, be more digitalized, so that we can avail the opportunities. At this stage, also we can uh, develop ourselves and our country. Uh, so, with one line, I would like to tell. Utilize all the uh, digitalized technology and learn as far as possible. So I would like to pass on to Ranjini Ravi. Hi, good morning all. Good evening. This is Ranjini from the World Academy of Art and Science. I've learned to take a pause, you know, breathe and think more about my future, what I want to do in my life and 
how I've been wasting my potentials and what can I do about them? Not just regret about my choices, but what I can do in the future. That's it, I guess. Next, I'd like to call Drishya Patak. Hi, everyone. This is Drishya from the pop movement. And the one thing that I learned during the COVID situation is um, patience. Thank you. And I would like to nominate um, uh, Dr. Norma. Thank you, Drisha. Hello, I'm uh, Norma from Mexico City. I am a mentor for pub movement also. And then what I learned now is that we can uh, take uh, the best from us, working a lot and taking care of the people that is around you and looking that they have uh, a lot of troubles with this situation and you can help them. Thank you. Can you pass the word to? Um, I don't think that I see somebody else. Let me take a look. We are 35. Jesus. Nina, maybe. Uh, Nina, oh, Ana Carrillo, maybe also. <laughs> Nina, Nina, who's, are you there? I, yeah, hi. Um, hi, I'm, I'm originally from California, but I'm currently in Massachusetts. And something I've learned from this virus is to appreciate little moments with your family because it's important. Um, I will pass it to. Um, Ana Carrillo. Hello, my name is Ana. I'm from Mexico. And one thing I've learned is how to spend more quality time with my family. I pass the word to Dr. Ash. My name is Ash and I'm also from the pop movement. Um, so big welcome to everybody again. And I want to say that the, the pandemic has um, taught me one thing, uh, which is that uh, we've, I've always believed this, but kindness is, is probably key. Uh, and I would say kindness is the most important thing because like I think I heard someone else say that you really don't know what other people are going through. And so uh, kindness and compassion. And I will ask, uh, uh, let me see, I'm gonna ask uh, Nitya. Nitya to go next, please. Hi everyone, uh, I'm from India. And one thing I learned during this pandemic is uh, how to be alone with myself. And I'd pass it on to, um, Adele Buckley. Hello. Adele. Um, okay. Okay. Finally, <laughs> look, <laughs> I'm um, of a much older generation, but I, I just wanted to understand a bit what's, on your mind. I, I have recently participated in a, um, a, a I'm from Toronto in Canada and recently participated in a multi-week exploration of what sort of policies will Canada have going forward after COVID-19. Um, and and uh, there were various experts from around the world. And one of the things that I am concerned about is that throughout my life, I've had a sort of predictable uh, world to work in and I've had a lot of opportunities and I don't see the same sort of predictability for, for the people I see joining here. And it concerns me because I want you to have the open-ended world that I enjoyed. <laughs> Oh, and I guess I'll pass it on to Susanna. Thank you.
Susanna, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, but uh, I already talked. I'm yeah, sorry. She, she <laughs> her, she, yeah. Michelle is there. Michelle. All right. Maybe, Susanna, you can pass it on to someone else in that case. We... I'm here. Mika. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm Michelle. from Mexico. One thing I've learned is peace how to be uh, in peace with myself and with the people that is around me. And uh, I don't know who... who... I, I think, think that Marisa Dori. Hassan spoke. Yes. Yes. Midori. Excuse me? Please. Ah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Midori Kawano from Japan. Hello, Midori. Uh, and thank you, everyone. Hello. And what I learned now is how the trust and inner connection, like uh, connection with others mentally, are so important. So thank you. I'm looking forward to the following <laughs> event. And I'll pass the word to, and I'm sorry, I don't know who is rest. Yeah. You go next. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Marisa? Midori. Thank you. Yeah, this, hi, thanks, Midori. This is Marisa Lopez. And I would say that one thing I remember today is that it's important to laugh. Because <laughs> mm. even though um, there's a lot of different things going on all over the world, it's still important to find joy every day, no matter what. So that's one thing that I've been reminded of. Yeah. Um, now I'm trying to see if there's anyone I can see who has not gone. I think Jai Belu. Yes, that was what I was just going to say. Jai Belu. <laughs> You're muted, but would you like to go? I may be mispronouncing your name. Peace. Yeah, we've got a few people. Um, yeah, so can you hear Jai Belu? Jai Belu? Ah, I think there's a, maybe you, Feliz. let's try, Fel, Feliz? Feliz on the bus? Yes. Feliz, are you there? Okay. Maybe they are a, a little bit. Salihat? Salihat? I think there's a problem. Yeah. Um, Vishnu? Yeah. But I, it's uh, like hello. Vishnu. Hello. Hello, yes, hi, Vishnu. My name is Manish Gupta, uh, Vishnu. I'm from India. Uh, I am learning in this pandemic creative things and, uh, <laughs> and uh, taking care of my health. Thank you. And I'm going to the Camila. <laughs> she did it already. Okay, Camila is gone, but we were waiting for. Javilu, uh, Phyllis, Salihat, uh, if you could hear us, uh, if not, yeah, hey, thank you. Hi, my name is Salihat. Okay. Hi. And I'm from, okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm Javilu from uh, uh, Kadlur. Uh, we are in Tamil Nadu. So what I personally feel is uh, during with uh, this COVID time when the world is in a pandemic situation, and I feel this is the time when we don't have any uh, option for any solution, we need to go to the divine and to call for the divine to solve this problem. Yes. It may be uh, any form of God to whichever country they should sincerely call the divine to help for us. Thank you. We have, we have tried all our level best throughout the country. We feel that the world is uh, expert in medical science, but still, uh, I feel this is a time to invoke uh, the spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
we were wondering if Phyllis, if you were able to hear us, uh, would love to, would love to, uh, you know, hear your reflections, please. Um, okay, I, I think uh, there may be a problem. Um, Saliat? All right. Anybody who uh, perhaps is having trouble with the microphone, if you could. Oh, hi. Please. Welcome. Hi, my name is Sally Hart. Hello. I am from Nigeria. And the one thing I've learned about um, this from the whole COVID is the importance of mental health and um, spending more time and reflecting, self reflection, and just taking a minute to breathe and just live life with the whole uncertainty. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's invaluable. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe you have Feliz. Um, if you uh, are struggling with your microphone, we'd love to receive your thoughts in the chat box. If uh, you, could, you could type, please. Um, and uh, help me out here. Uh, Vanessa, have we missed anyone? Or if there's anybody else who hasn't spoken, could we invite you, please? Yes, um, we have Sam Lian, but it looks like he's also having troubles with the, with the microphone. So maybe he can type in the chat his name please. and country and, um, and, what, and a word, what have you learned in the COVID situation? Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to continue giving some indications for the next section please. for the workshop. Okay. Super. So during the workshop, we will go to breakout rooms to discuss under some key questions we will share, that we will share with you. In each breakout room, we will have one facilitator that will be there to guide you and support in case you have any doubts. Our facilitators, uh, facilitator for breakout room one is Ms. Summer Benjamin. Hello, everyone, again. For the breakout room two, we will have Ms. Camila Gonzalez. Hey, everybody. And for breakout room three, we will have Ms. Anna Hanahausen as facilitator. Hi, everyone. In this breakout room sessions, we will have two main sections. In section one, Participants will identify a challenge they have faced and their motivation to work on it. Please, Ana Carrillo, can you share the screen if you have, um, if you're available to share it, please can you share it? In this section, we are going to address some questions. We are going to address two questions. These questions are going to be shared by the facilitators. And on screen, you can see the questions from the first, uh, for the first section for breakout room one. These questions are going to be shared by the facilitators. In this section, it will be, we will have eight minutes for this section to discuss all these questions. In section two, participants will build three transformative actions for one challenge identified. They will, you will go ahead and evaluate them and create an action plan that can be applied in the challenges identified. Each breakout room will discuss only two questions. Can we pass to the second slide, please, Anna? You will be notified inside your breakout room in which questions you will go, you will go in proactively discussing. You can see on screen the four questions that we will discuss prospectively in this section. So for this session, we are going to have approximately 20 to 25 minutes. After we proactively discuss the questions, we will come back with everybody and have a positive collective feedback discussion. Each group will need to nominate one or two people from your group to present the results in an interactive way. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them to your facilitator. Ms. Vani, can we just go ahead and travel to the breakout rooms? Everybody have fun with this breakout yeah. rooms with you. Enjoy it. Yes, thank you, Vanessa. Enjoy it, everyone.
Buenos días a todos. Estimados participantes en el e-workshop Desarrollo de Liderazgo Juvenil para Acción Climática en todos los continentes en la situación COVID-19. Para mí es un honor participar en este foro relevante y dar un breve mensaje sobre cómo los jóvenes de mi país se están convirtiendo en líderes climáticos a través de la promoción de los Objetivos del Desarrollo Sostenible, el fomento del liderazgo climático y la implementación de soluciones locales y regionales con un punto de vista global. Como ejemplo de este esfuerzo, fueron los pasados 11 y 12 de julio, tuvimos el evento Ecoproyectos de Cuarentena, motivado por la pandemia y el confinamiento social. Evento organizado por los jóvenes de la familia POP en la Universidad de Guadalajara, como un medio para que la juventud universitaria tome acción sobre los principales problemas ambientales de su comunidad, generen y compartan ideas entre ellos, así como interaccionen con líderes de Latinoamérica que les ayuden a orientar sus acciones para hacerlas más efectivas. En este evento se contó con la participación de 16 proyectos grupales enfocados a resolver diversos problemas como la limpieza de un río en la región nororiente del estado de Jalisco la bioconversión de plásticos, uso de residuos orgánicos para la producción de hortalizas, captación y uso doméstico de agua de lluvia, educación ambiental, entre otros. Después de dos jornadas de mucha emoción, los tres proyectos ganadores son una muestra clara de liderazgo que este tipo de eventos ha impulsado en los jóvenes. Estos proyectos son Lecciones que nos dejó el coronavirus, curso taller de huertos urbanos. Captación de agua atmosférica para un aprovechamiento sustentable. Implementación de una técnica de reforzado con carácter biodegradable a partir de polietileno de baja densidad y restos vegetales. Finalmente puedo afirmar que soy testigo de cómo estos líderes juveniles facilitan el proceso de aprendizaje y la reflexión histórica en sus comunidades sobre el entorno y las acciones climáticas para la mejora de este. Confío que este workshop sea un éxito, los mejores deseos y saludos desde Guadalajara, México. Hello everyone, my name is Andy. Uh, I'm part of the POP movement team here in Germany, which I founded a few years ago. And I'm very happy that you're all together today in this international group to speak about how to improve um, young leadership as far as sustainable work is concerned. Ash asked me if I could uh, send you a little bit my point of view about some special aspects and he gave me some examples and I would absolutely love to talk to you about um, two aspects. The first one, how can young people improve, um, e.g. to communicate uh, and to motivate their communities to become effective climate leaders. So um, for me and for our group it is very important um, that young people talk to young people and it's not me like a teacher to talk to young people because it's absolutely different if you're talking in a peer group so there is a higher effect when you young people talk to other young people than i would do that so always when we do some kind of um, project it's me absolutely in the background so i'm part of the planning i'm part of maybe helping but it's not me at the end who talk to the young people so i think this is um, very important another way Uh, sorry, another point uh, which comes to my mind when we talk about how to communicate effectively to help sustainable action will have success uh, is the following one. So I'll show you our, our website and we, we pointed out um, how what is our way of moving, what is our way of acting. And we have two points which fits perfect to my idea 
is um, young human beings raise awareness among other young human beings. That's what I'm just talking about. And the other one is this will not be achieved by wetting one fingers at others. So I'm 38 years now. No, I'm 39 years now because today is my birthday. Um, so when I was a student aging 15, 16, we already had the sustainable action work in our uh, geography books. And the teachers told us, hey, you shouldn't. And nothing worked. So uh, there's a very famous um, phrase or technical word for it in American English. It's called nudge. So you have to push the people without that they are that they recognize that they get pushed so uh, we try to do this in our german group by creating some kind of surprise moments we call it or in, in german you have the word aha moment so we don't tell them hey it's not good to take the car uh, please don't take it because it's this amount of co2 coming out uh, of your car each kilometer. Now what we did is we we built what we called weight models. So people told us, okay, uh, my trip to work is around 30 kilometers. Then we calculated simultaneously how much CO2 is this. And we put it in our weight model and the people had to get it in balance with the weights putting on. Or we put a backpack and told them, hey, this is the weight of CO2 for Monday, but you go to work on Tuesday, next one, Wednesday, Thursday, and things like that. So at the end, they were behaving like, like this. Um, and that's what people feel. And it's much better to let the people feel what it means instead of just telling them naked numbers, which will they forgot immediately. So that's what we call aha moment, because the people in this moment, when they have all the weights here carrying around, so, ah, okay, crazy, yeah? So my, my tip for you, my hint for you is, uh, if you do start acting with young people, um, think about, do those projects which have realistically the best chances to have a success in a short time because this will keep the group together don't start with the biggest project it's very important at the beginning that you have a project which will have success in a more or less a very short way and this doesn't need to be a huge project okay my second hint is um always think about um, you would like to change the behavior of the people and acting and behavior is something completely different. The acting is what I do now. So you don't want them to use the car today or uh, whatever, but that they don't do it every day means that you have to tell them again and again and again and to build surprise moments again and again and again so it's not done by only do it one time it's a very important fact only if they change their action their everyday acting for a consecutive days for a row of consecutive days again and again and again then you're in their behavior okay the second thing i would like to talk about in a very short uh, minute is um the point five um no, sorry, it wasn't point five. What was it? Ah, what strategies? Point four uh, could be considered to involve young climate leaders in governance and high-level decision-making and policies. So that's what I tell my students all the time. If you don't want to improve only on the school level, on the area level around the school, in the home village, you have to go to politics. And I put them we went to two or three um, political uh, meetings in our uh, home school village. And there is two things to say about that. First one, everyone's absolutely happy to have young people there. It's crazy because most of them are elderly people. The second one is you don't have to be shy because we have a German phrase for it. Uh, also, the old, old people only cook with hot water, which means there is nothing special about them only because they are old. So they can't do it better. And I would like to, to close with a very, um, with a very uh, yeah, bad example. So we've been there because there was a decision um, taking place at this political meeting uh, about 
a sustainable project which should have been improved in our village and uh, it was on the timetable of this day, I don't know the English word for it, it was number 14. So they had already made 13 decisions before. And the decision taking process was around 35 minutes. Who thinks this is a good one? And who thinks it's not a good decision? And that's net. So and this is the time when young people, would, if they would be in this group, would stand up and say, okay, this is not the way that it can go. We cannot have the decision number 12, should the tennis court will have a new net, uh, have 30 seconds discussion, as same as number 13, uh, shall there be trees planted uh, in our area. Uh, so this is a different way, uh, way of uh, importance. So this is, I think, the plan you should follow. Take a group build a party, go into politics and just tell them that's not the right way. You don't have to have a completely right way which to present them. Only tell them, hey, I think we should think about that a second time. Um, and there's only two ways. Go to the politics or become Elon Musk or Bill Gates and have a lot of money and then do it the other way around. Yeah. Okay. My wish, because it's my birthday today, go on. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. Hi, Bonnie. I hope you enjoy this time and use it to learn more from other people from different countries. So now we are going to continue with the next session of the workshop. We are going to continue for a feedback and group discussion section where we are going to present our results and um, some I had some ideas about the questions you had answered. So now, Ms. Filo, it's going to, to give us the indication, indications. Filo, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Uh, the indications is just this. Every group will have five minutes to present. We have three groups in total. Nithya will be the timekeeper. When one minute, when we have the last one minute, she will indicate the group to finish the presentation. So I think we can start with the third group first. Uh, who is going to present in the third group? Yes, Anna, uh, who is presenting? Oh, you, mean, you mean third? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So the people who will present from our group are Gitika and um, Susanna. Okay, so before I leave the floor to them, uh, Dr. Rash and Dr. Norma will guide the discussions after the presentation that happens. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Gitika, and I think the way our discussion went, uh, it was really interesting and we have divided uh, our entire discussion into uh, three parts, I would say. First part is, uh, what is the, uh, like we, we want to spread awareness, but how do we get the information from, or what are the different ways we can collect information? And the second is, who are we targeting right now? And then how do we ultimately spread awareness? Uh, so one interesting point that came up was like uh, all the indigenous communities and in the rural, rural areas, people uh, really understand how the, uh, how the environment works. I mean, they know uh, how to cult what kind of crops to cultivate and how to uh, cultivate in a way that it's most productive and so on and so forth. I think it's really important uh, that we uh, gather all that knowledge and spread it across the world because it's just confined to those communities right now. So that is uh, one of the very important uh, sources of uh, knowledge right now, which is kind of untouched. I think that was uh, one of the points that we all discussed. And the second point is once we gather all this information, then who should we target? Uh, I think it should uh, start from the very beginning, like even the kids at home uh, should be educated uh, on how to nurture, nurture nature and how to like, we give them actionable items that they can relate to. For example, it could be as simple as just sowing a small plant and how to do that, how to nurture it and see it grow. And when it grows, it gives an immense amount of joy that would again motivate the kids to uh, continue the same action or even uh, add more to it. And uh, 
then then we could spread it uh, via social media that could be one of the mediums or uh, we could even educate uh, using uh, via schools like schools could make make the it make it more interactive to be able to share the knowledge uh, instead of just having it as a subject in our syllabus it could be more interactive and uh, the way people can uh, can really act Susanna, would you like to add some more points to it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hi, I'm Susanna, and following to what Gitika said, um, it's very important that we take this knowledge that indigenous people will will like. I I think will they will give it like volunteering because they they love the earth and they love caring about it because you see they know that it's the only home they have. So then when we take this knowledge, we give it to little people, well, little people, the little kids that are in home right now that are not getting all the attention they need in some points of their lives. So getting these kids to really know what they can do in a daily basis is really important to, to really hand them the practice and uh, the projects, uh, the most basic projects we can have to really ensure their creativity and their, their, their um, spirit of, of, new, new, of, of having new knowledge. Also to support the schools and all the educational programs to really develop the, this area that sometimes is really uh, underestimated of the ecological um, knowledge that they can give us because it's really outdated outdated if we see it in that way so it's very important to take this time that teachers have a little bit of more time and directors and all the staff in in the schools uh, public as uh, private schools to really get this the importance that climate action needs because you can teach a kid to be a doctor, but what doctor it will be if the world is falling apart. So it's really important to get this environmental education going. And the final part, as Girika said, is getting the targets on this social, well, in this social media era that we have to show the people uh, all around the world that climate action is a daily life thing that you don't have to buy expensive things and you don't have to uh, make big projects. You just have to be conscious and take your part in this activism. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll spend the next, before we move on to the next session, we will spend the next five minutes uh, talking about the feedback and comments that we have to the presentation that happened. Dr. Rash, if the participants have any feedback, also you can please go ahead and speak now. Yeah, that's a great idea, Philo. Thank you so much. It would be wonderful to hear a little reflection from anyone else who might like to share their thoughts or comments. Um, I'd be happy to pass on to Dr. Norma, but before that, I'd like to say, I think, uh, I think you've come up with some incredible thoughts and ideas. I do hear you saying uh, a few things. One is that indigenous knowledge and wisdom is critical, uh, that we should uh, underscore the importance of education. And I think Yitika also talked about the importance of schools. I'd had uh, the privilege of sort of getting some insight as I roamed the rooms. Um, and I think that that's uh, really great as, an inst as a solution to institutionalizing some of this change. Uh, and then I also heard you saying that um, moving beyond theory to practice is a great way to go. And certainly also, uh, while we know that there are some divides with technology, uh, certainly, but it does offer opportunities such as the one that we're currently tapping into where some of us at least are able to use it. And I think that those are all incredible uh, solutions to uh, really being able to move forward and make change. Uh, one really practical solution was the idea of institutionalizing change uh, at the level of schools. 
And I'd love to be able to hear a little bit more, just if you have any thoughts. And again, I'm open to opening up uh, on the idea of how schools beyond curriculum uh, could really have young people engaged, uh, because I think this will provide some really important implications for how we can progress to maybe engaging schools so that we move beyond just teaching theory, but engaging young people in taking action. I know you talked about planting trees uh, and possibly clean, cleaning up waste, but I'd love to hear if there are any other thoughts, certainly from your group, group number three, and also others, because I think that uh, that is a very, uh, that's a very positive uh, avenue to adopt. And I think all the rest of your ideas weave into that. So I think it's invaluable to hear what you had to share, but I'll ask you to think a little bit further and there may be some additional thoughts that come up here. So um, with that, I'll, over, uh, I'll hand over to Dr. Norma. Dr. Norma, if you have any insights and then maybe we can open up quickly for some thoughts and comments. Yeah, thank please. you, thank you, Ash. I will be very quickly uh, because uh, what I wanted to say to you, well, you are the leaders, you are young leaders. And uh, I would like to ask you how we can be inclusive because since uh, two days ago, I was listening that uh, you want to go through the kids, through the youth. But remember that to change, we need to change completely, all of us. And all of us means all sectors of the society. And uh, you are thinking about social media, and we have people who cannot use so social media. And we have indigenous people that to spread the, the word, they need to have some facilities, and they don't have it. You need you really need to think about how you can manage this, how you can be inclusive with them, how you can teach them, not only kids, you need to think about other sectors. That is my, uh, my question to you, and I think that you will be able to give out splendid answers. Sure, I, I think, thank you, Dr. Norma. Um, I think that it's great for us, all of us, uh, to think about inclusive strategies. I think some of the ideas around the indigenous community communities and wisdom, ancient wisdom is also key to that. And, um, you know, as, as a universe um, here who, who has, a, has a responsibility, it would be wonderful to be able to get some collective thinking. And with that, uh, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts about how we might maybe one engage schools. I think we have only uh, a minute to go, but if there's some immediate comments and thoughts, it would be wonderful. Um, I just want to congratulate everybody for the great thinking as well uh, and the ideas here. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on how we might. Uh, Gitika, I was wondering if you had any thoughts on this, or Camila, if you wanted to share some thoughts, or anybody else, uh, even from the other groups, on how schools also might adopt some of these approaches to practice. I, why, uh, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, uh, especially uh, in a school, yes. uh, 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 we have been telling about uh, the planting of trees and uh, uh, cleaning the places and uh, uh, everything. But yes. one thing is uh, there, which I like to share, because uh, uh, almost uh, if you ask all the school children to uh, cycle from their home to school, thereby they can reduce pollutions uh, by way of transportation and they can improve their health. Uh, if they are coming daily uh, daily to school and going back to home, it's a wonderful exercise. They get both morning and the evening. Yes. So their health is taken care, the environmental pollution is taken care. And in nowadays in schools, they have very limited time. Uh, 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 in foreign countries, they have uh, co they have more concentration on sports, but the schools in India, India is like they concentrate yeah. more on studies and marks and something else, and okay. they give a very limited time for the students. Uh, thereby, the juvenile diabetes are opened up uh, in a very big way in India. Right. But, uh, but these small things uh, will help in a very yeah. bigger way. Yeah. If yeah. we make it as compulsory that uh, children should uh, uh, come by cycle and go to cycle from their house yeah. to, even it may be a small distance when they do it for some 15 to 20 years, naturally they will have a very good health. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's wonderful. I appreciate your thoughts and I can see some comments coming into the chat here. Um, thank you very much for sharing. And I, 
uh, think that the idea is a very powerful one. And I'm sure that many solutions, including the ones that you have underscored are, are going to be phenomenal uh, in terms of taking a step in the right direction and beginning to institutionalize the change we're talking about. Thank you very much to all of you. And with that, I hand back uh, to, to Philo to, to pick up on the discussion for the next group. Thank you very much and a big congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Raj. I now request group number two, who is presenting Hi. in your group. Hi. All Hi. right, so for group number two, Jesus and Akshay are presenting. The floor is yours. Thank you. Well, we discuss about the opportunities that we have to work like from home. What is the challenge that we are having? And well, our team talked that the biggest uh, challenge that we as you are having right now is the lack of uh, digital opportunities and digital tools to work to share ideas because uh, some of, of, of us, sorry, have the opportunity to do it. But a lot of people on the world don't have the opportunity to have a computer or maybe a good connection to work like with us in this moment. Also, we discussed that we need to have an easy language to speak about old knowledge and also the scientists and the you know, politicians should have an easy language to share the ideas and to do laws to share all of the knowledge that they have because it's um, more easier to a different uh, people, I don't know, sh child or adults to understand the same language if it's easier. It doesn't mean if it's Spanish, English or other language. We're uh, talking about to have a solid oh idea and to share with the others. I don't know if um, Akasha wants to say something. Um, yes, uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to share the thoughts. So extending on the idea of language, uh, we also uh, came up with uh, thoughts that uh, the bureaucrats, the diplomats, the industry speak a different kind of language than youth. You know, uh, Their terms, their diplomacy is completely different than what we speak. So uh, there is a huge gap and we have to somehow find a middle ground where youth can be able to express their views and the stakeholders can actually understand what we are trying to express. Uh, so we came up with a few ways of how to do that. Uh, first thing was a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Uh, Camilla shared her experience of one-on-one -on -one experience uh, with a mentor. So uh, a mentor is someone who already understands what industry uh, wants, needs and the language of industry and also how bring up youth to that level. So the mentor can train all the mentees to really understand the language and like, speak their language. Uh, the second one was uh, to try and understand and come up with a course. Uh, for example, if we do the mentor mentorship program for, for a few months, we'll understand where the youth lacks the gaps and we could probably come up with a material, like an online course or something, which will bring the new people who are coming into the group up to the speed, like, you know, they can go through the material, they can come up to the speed by going through the material. And that's like a common ground that we're all making for the youth. And we all can be on the same page when we are talking and expressing our views. And uh, a last point that uh, I think this came up in the middle. Uh, the point was, uh, uh, how do we become more effective policy makers? And how can youth play a role making good policies? The problem with youth today is that uh, we don't have the maturity to think in long terms or maturity uh, up to the power of the industry. Okay? Uh, we speak in short terms, but uh, to really make a change, we have to have that maturity and that knowledge and that insight to actually make a very good plan that can convince everybody around us. So we have to find ways of doing that, you know, improving the level of knowledge, maturity and insight among the youth that who come in. These are all the points that we kind of discussed and I summarized, I, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, to both of you, uh, Hermano Jesus, and also to, to you, uh, Aksha. These are, these are really interesting. And I think, uh, uh, I know you, you also alluded to some insights that Camila shared. So I want to acknowledge everybody's uh, thoughts and input to this. And I do think that what you've articulated is a critical, 
is a critical area that we need to bridge, which is uh, the divide right now between, and maybe perhaps even the critical reason for why we have not beyond, moved beyond tokenistic engagement of youth in, in global decision making. And I think that this is a key area because uh, it's one thing to say voices of young people and, and we've, we've uh, known of meetings that have happened over a period of time, many important ones where young people are brought in merely to introduce themselves and really not contribute anything substantive. But that with, with the ideas that you've shared and, and I think also a lot of the insight is a critical area that we need to to, to, uh, to transform. And uh, I love the idea of the mentorship programs and also the courses. I also wanted to say that I hope there'll be many more opportunities where um, and platforms where young people will be able to genuinely uh, engage with and contribute to global dialogue and decision making together with leaders at maybe more senior, like you described, dip diplomats and so on. Because the way that I look at it is that young people are leaders of today. This is not, it's, it's, it's incomplete to say we're talking to leaders without engaging young people because youth are leaders. So each one of you here is um, playing a critical par part in paving the path to the, to, to the future, but as leaders today. So I think that that's something uh, I hope we can come up with some real um, you know, important practical strategies to, to overcome. Some of it is mindset, some of it is the way that things have been. Uh, but I do agree with you, this is an area that we do need to very proactively address and find practical solutions. I love the ideas you came up with and I'm wondering if we can open up and ask also if there are other ideas that perhaps uh, some of the rest of our young leaders here might have to further strengthen this area, you know, this particular domain that will, you know, young people should be carving out policies and, and definitely have a strong and uh, amplified voice in the process of global decision making. So I'm wondering if there are other ideas apart from the, the program, the training program, potentially more mentorship uh, and guidance. Are there other ideas that some of the other young leaders we have here want to add to that. And with that, I'll ask Dr. Norma too, just before we bring in um, you know, some more voices. Dr. Norma, if you had any additional thoughts and comments or uh, you wanted to add something to this, please. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ash. Well, my comment is the follow. Uh, I think that this group was focused directly in communication, completely. Why communication is so important? Because a lack of communication makes all trouble that we have in the world. If we don't communicate, all trouble is coming behind us. And uh, you were talking about tools like uh, devices that people has, uh, not everyone has an device, name it a uh, PC, notebook, uh, iPad, whatever. Then you are talking about education. And that is very important issue. That is the main issue that I sort out from this. And the language, we are not used to have the language that we need because we are thinking that everybody needs to know technical issues, technical war, diplomatic and so, and we don't go with a normal and regular language to speak to people. And uh, I think that that is very important. And at the end, you are talking about policymakers. That will come with education, with practice, with communication. Decision making is not so easy, but you need to have skills to do it. Then, congratulations for this group. Communication is over that you are talking about, and I am happy for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Dr. Norma, for sharing that. And uh, I can see some important comments coming into the chat as well. Uh, Zamli and thank you for sharing and and would love to hear I think I don't know how much more time we might have below for uh, pardon me uh, Nitya for this particular um, presentation but if we have a few uh, have a minute or so uh, it would be wonderful to be able to get a few uh, thoughts yes we have a minute and a half so I'm wondering if anybody else would like to share their thoughts on uh, how we might amplify voices of young people especially 
the, uh, to achieve uh, an important part that yet you to play in global decision making. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and also feel free to please put your comments in chat here. Zam, I know your, your voice is not working, so we appreciate the, the typing uh, and notes in the box here. Ash, if, is, if I may? Please, sir, it's such uh, an no. honor. Thank you. Oh, uh, no, absolutely. I, I congratulate uh, because uh, this group is quite interesting in, in the sense that you are trying to, to perfect your communication at, 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 at high level. And, uh, and uh, I think that, uh, I, if I recall correctly, I mean, it was a long time ago when I was young, uh, I was used to think about uh, people uh, over 30 uh, uh, already out of the game of having new, having new ideas, you know? And, and I was so wrong. <laughs> but again, uh, then uh, I learned a lot uh, uh, that uh, we are unique, but our, our unicity is created by the connection to all the other peoples all over the world. And so we have to acknowledge diversity that is able to define our unicity. We are all connected. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, sir. That's uh, that's invaluable and it's uh, profound as well because it's so true that we're all unique and, and diverse and at the same time, more and more, we're so connected. And I think as a collective, uh, there's so much potential to, and so much more strength. And, uh, uh, and, and also, I think that collective action and voice is what offers us the promise. So um, I sincerely and deeply appreciate your thoughts and many thanks once again for joining us and for sharing. Um, I know we've had a few comments to the chat box. I uh, would love any additional thoughts and comments that any one of you have in terms of, yes, please, Camila, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, I was honored to have such an amazing group to facilitate. Really, guys, thank you so much. And your insight was so powerful. And well, I think um, the group did an amazing job and specifically the, the main input um, that I thought was the most interesting was finding this common ground, not only between policymakers and the youth, but also with scientists, because as we all know, the climate crisis is based on facts and it's absolutely necessary, not only for youth and policymakers to understand also the scientific language and to break these language barriers that I think for most, us, most young people is quite difficult coming into a panel or talking a one-on-one -on -one conversation, which was also a really interesting input um, from Marissa that one-on-one um, -on -one conversations between youth and policymakers and scientists is absolutely necessary. However, without breaking these um, bureaucratic and technical language barriers, it's really difficult to understand each other. So um, that was a really amazing um, discussion. It was really interesting extremely, extremely powerful. So thank you so much for everybody. And that was one of the best um, conversations we had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Camila. Uh, and, and I would also like to congratulate everyone else for, uh, for, for supporting the facilitation and also for contributing. So it's a, it's a big congratulations to everyone. Thank you very much for the invaluable contribution. I will uh, take the uh, liberty of passing back to Vanessa, I believe, will guide us through to the next group. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, sir, for your insights. And Camila, many thanks. You're very welcome. Thank you. Vanessa. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Rash. You. So now we would like to hear about breakout room number one. We would like to know about their inputs, their strategies, or the results that they had in the breakout session. So now, group one, the floor is yours. We have Carol who's going to share from group one. So if Carol, you could uh, please begin. Thanks so much. 
Thank you. So I'll try to summarize everything, but if something's missing, please, group number one, help me. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. uh, what we talk about is uh, how uh, we have to be resilient and to create a strong network and connections with uh, young leaders in this, in this pandemic. Also, uh, we talk about how it's very important to be informed and aware of our current environmental situation. This, uh, to fully understand how to face sustainability problems and how to solve them. Also, um, we talk about some plans uh, after this, this pandemic, after COVID. And we talk about uh, how it is important to teach new generation about climate action. Also to keep in touch with, with everybody to create a strong network and this in order to help each other's projects. Also, um, we talk about how to prepare ourselves to be the best physically and mentally to collaborate with others in order to make uh, a climate action. Well, I tried to summarize everything, but if something was missing, please uh, let me know and, and add it, please. Great, great, Carol. Uh, was there anybody else uh, that wanted to contribute and or add uh, anything further to to the points that Carol already mentioned? Um, the outcomes of group number one. Um, okay. Yeah, anybody from Please. group number one, Raul, Michelle. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, anybody, please, if you want to add some more. Yes. Thank you, Summer. Summer, was there anything you wanted to add also? Uh, yeah, I think uh, a lot of the topics that we talked about or have kind of already been shared with the big group and definitely the fact that we wanted to connect um, multiple generations to be able to have those conversations. I think that's one thing that we found was really important because yeah. um, on this call, we have so many different um, age demographics and groups. Um, here represented. So I think that's been really important to have these conversations so that we can, as youth, get a chance to share our ideas and our projects with um, the people who are in these positions already to make the changes so that we can learn how to get there and, um, get, and just be able to share our projects with them. And so I think that's one thing that we found was important is just yeah the networking networking of it all but specifically connecting multiple generations right uh yeah no thank you uh both and the entire group uh for for those really important ideas i think you echo some of the thoughts from other groups and it's not surprising it, it is a, a a really important um step in that direction to be able to uh, I know you highlighted the importance of resilience and mental health and strength and all that kind of ties into resilience, but at the same time, uh, being part of the network and collective is in fact also uh, a strategy toward achieving resilience. And um, certainly the, the networking should support uh, progress in the sense of moving in the direction of, of strengthening uh, relationships with decision makers as young people have an important voice and contribution to make in decision making at global level. Uh, and um, I, what I would ask, and maybe um, Carol, I know Raul, um, Chevelu, Summer, um, I'm wondering if there was discussion or deliberation around some of the strategies that may also help to, to move in that direction. And I wondered if you had any thoughts about that. I think it is critical. And again, I wanna highlight the fact that I think what I'd like to say is that young people are leaders of today and it is really important to be able to strengthen those networks and be uh, an important voice in, um, in, in decision-making, policy-making and so on. And so I think that your thoughts are critical and yes, I, I was going to just say that indigenous groups and indigenous people and communities who are often not on platforms like this one and or not included always in decisions uh, because you know sometimes uh, as we found even with the Black Lives Matter uh, movement that we are witnessing as we speak, 
that in the process of being inclusive, sometimes we are not entirely inclusive, we end up being exclusive. And so it's really important that as we move forward, we move forward as a whole. Uh, I, think, I, I think that point is really important. Thank you, Zen Lian, for sharing. Um, and I love to hear any additional voices and thoughts. And uh, before I pass along to you, Dr. Norma, if you wanted to add anything to that, um, I think I would underscore all the points that have already been flagged. Okay, thank you, Ash. Well, yeah, I'm very happy because the three groups, they were talking about uh, topics that complement each other. This group, I'm happy because they are taking the environmental issues very, very good in hands. They want to know how the problems are, where they have the problems, how to be sustainable, how to be the best, to help each other or to help others, how to connect and how to create networks. And that is very important. I think that you are, all of you, the three groups, are ready for the great reset to be greener, to be smarter, and to be fairer. Thank you so very much for your inputs, for your ideas, and I hope that you will go further with these uh, actions, climatic actions. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Norma. I appreciate it. And I wondered, um, Again, uh, opening up if there were any additional thoughts or comments, and particularly if there were any about uh, how we might actually take tangible next steps in moving toward uh, a more inclusive and also networked collective group. I was wondering if anybody had any thoughts, um, Summer, um, and even from the other groups, please, if there were any thoughts or inputs. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we actually talked briefly about um, our experience in school and what we learned uh, in terms of the environmental issues. And we uh, learned that most of us didn't actually learn that in school. And this has been said a lot, but yeah, I think uh, a way that we can um, go forward, yeah, just by creating these, yeah, like programs that you, we kind of already talked about that, um, yeah, teach young people and maybe from old, uh, older youth but still youth, teaching yeah. the younger people um, from their perspectives and sharing their projects and of course, ways that they can understand. But um, we found that, because of course, what we learned in school gets us to where we are no ma uh, now, no matter what. So we kind of briefly touched on that and noticed that um, most of us didn't actually learn it in school and it probably would have helped us um, move forward quicker and start these projects faster and just get involved um, Yeah, um, more from an earlier age. So I think also um, having um, these environmental issues be taught to younger youth by youth um, would be really good. Great. Uh, that's amazing. I think buying for young people is a powerful approach. Um, and thank you for sharing that. I also do agree with you. We Youth that are not homogenous and there are some that are more experienced. There are others who have experience in some areas and even those who are Experience may not have experience in everything, so it would be great to have programs that uh, connect young people uh, with more young people. So there's, uh, I think that links to the points that were raised in the previous groups as well about having mentorships uh, uh, and uh, courses and programs that would support this more proactively and consciously, and that being inclusive in our approaches is is critical. Um, I, I do appreciate. Um, the, the insights and um, uh, please feel free to continue to chat. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts. I am conscious of time and would like to hand back to Vanessa um, who will uh, walk us through the next steps. But thank you all very, very much. And um, I think that the discussions have been hugely insightful and we deeply appreciate all the ideas and uh, the tremendous facilitation moderation. Thank you. Yes. Thank First. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for all your inputs and thoughts and for having this great feedback and group discussion. Um, thank you for all the contribution in creating transformative solutions on youth climate leadership challenges during COVID-19 situation. You have been a very important part of institutionalizing climate youth transformational leadership we would like to invite you to be part of this movement to keep you posted on the outcomes that we will have. 
So we see you, all of you, as a leader. So keep it up. We will, we will not like this to remain only in a workshop. So please um, stay in contact, everybody. Create this network bigger and bigger and bigger. And I would like to request everybody to fill a form. This is a registration form that Komal Mittal will share with us in the chat. So you can just go ahead and keep us posted and let us know um, about your success and about your outcomes. And if you apply the strategies that you develop here in this session. So thank you, thank you so much. And also, I would, I would like to ask everybody to fill the form. It's a feedback form. So we can improve in the sessions that we, we develop. So Komal, please, can you please um, share the, the feedback link? And I would like to give everybody one minute just to fill this registration form so we can all just keep connected and um, going forward to, with these strategies and continue this work together because this is like a longer process that we need to keep together and we need to make it happen. So I would like to everybody request please to answer this registration link and also the feedback form. So thank you, thank you so much. So I know I now I would like to invite Dr. Ash to give us a final closing of this workshop. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, um, Vanessa um, and, and everyone here. Um, and uh, I'd like to also convey our deepest thanks to uh, the World Academy of Art and Science um, and the UNOG, United Nations Office of Geneva. Uh, everyone who's been a tremendous help uh, and support to make this happen, but most of all for creating this space and opportunity for each one of us, which has been absolutely invaluable. I will echo what Vanessa just shared, which is that this is a, a part of a much larger process. So do please um, integrate. Um, your, your ideas have been absolutely invaluable. The time you spent together has been hugely precious. And we would love to be able to continue our conversation, learn how we can make progress together. And as you mentioned, strengthen that network. Um, the, the important thing I think is also that a lot of the ideas that you have proposed in the course of the hour plus uh, now that we've spent together are really actionable, tangible, and practical. So um, I would love for us to be able to start to really break it down and find ways to move forward on these in real, um, real ways. So we move beyond dialogue, which was the key impetus for bringing us together uh, and start to take action and do it together. And, and I absolutely deeply respect the thoughts that you've shared about being very inclusive in our approaches. Um, and so as we do it, let's be mindful, thoughtful, and respectful. Um, but I will say that um, it will be critical for us to stay in touch. And so with that, I would also like to say, I know Vanessa alluded to a link, which Komal has very kindly posted here. Um, I believe that the link has a uh, space for contacts, but if, um, but if you don't have your contact, we request you to please post it here. Um, we warmly welcome you to the POP family um, where, where, where you count and, and in a very profound manner. So um, thank you so much once again to each one of you. If somebody could uh, put in the POP movements uh, website here, it might be a good way to learn a little bit more, but I just wanted to say the POP movement, where POP stands for Protect Our Planet, is a um, movement which is focused, uh, literally driven by young people. It's global. Uh, we're currently working in close to 60 countries. Um, we're working with young people um, from all kinds of spaces, including several indigenous communities. Uh, we're now working with the over with close to 1.2 million youth uh, with over 300 partners and the partners of all kinds from from small um, and local community-based organizations NGOs to universities uh, as well as to uh, government local and state and uh, municipal governments and 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 so on so we're very we believe that um, the only way to really make progress is if we join hands with everyone um, and uh, you're definitely an important part of it. So we thank you very much. And once again, again convey our deepest uh, gratitude to the uh, World Academy of Arts and Science for its 
uh, invaluable partnership and this opportunity which brings us all together. Um, Sir, uh, uh, Sir Zolfo, we want to thank you very much for joining us, for sharing your thoughts and insights, and I'd love for you to share a few words if you would uh, like to um, share, share a message to inspire the young people um, who are here. And your presence in itself uh, takes us a long way, but thank you very much once again. And my heart is congratulations to the facilitators and the participants, Bonnie, Akshay, everybody. Thank you, sir, please. Thank you, Ash, uh, for your kind words, but uh, I think that uh, uh, we all uh, learn a new word in the past days, uh, resilience. Huh? But uh, uh, you, as a young people, uh, you have to ask for anti-fragility. That's the next <laughs> step. Resilience is not enough. If we want to really succeed, we have to ask for anti-fragility. Anti-fragility is the capacity to take advantage from anything that, that perturb your, your environment. And, and then uh, is uh, the, the trick you can use just to, to uh, take any opportunity to grow and learn faster. And you have to ask for anti-fragility in any future systems that you have to deal with. Otherwise, they are obsolete and you don't even spend a second with them, okay? Because otherwise you waste your time. That's that's the, the little secret. So the new world is anti-fragile, anti-fragility, and there is a wonderful book uh, from Nassim Taleb on anti-fragility. I I just uh, give this piece of, of advice to you to learn that book because it is really deep and 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 uh, help you to grow faster. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That is a profound message and indeed a reality as we live it today and in the years to come. And, and you're absolutely right. We need to start to move away from some of the, uh, well, our world is of unknown. So we really need to start to move away from some of the, uh, you know, previous uh, terms and, and areas we sort of focused on, including, uh, you know, uh, resilience to, to something much bigger and stronger. And anti-fragility is a is a powerful uh, concept, and thank you very much for your for your message, and also for opening our eyes to to uh, to, to to what we're in what's in store for for us, and how we might strengthen a collective approach to addressing those issues. Uh, we deeply appreciate it. I know some of us had the pleasure and privilege also meet to meet with uh, Mr. Gary Jacobs at the start of the session, and we thank him very very much, uh, and to you, sir, for and and all at us for this incredible opportunity and for your for your wisdom and I thank all of you for your wisdom and your leadership so uh, with deep gratitude I hand back to to Vanessa uh, to help us close and we're looking forward to staying in touch with each one of you many many thanks again for the time we've had together here thank you So thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for for your time and for your for your inputs on climate leadership. I would like to everybody to stay in touch in social media and stay in touch and via WhatsApp maybe groups. So thank you, everybody, for being here for your time and also for all these valuable strategies and and comments you have made on each breakout room. So I would like like. Um, everybody said to continue this and maybe to organize another session to be all together. So thank you everybody. Thank you Dr. Ash and thank you Dr. Norma. Thank you Sir Rodolfo. Thank you everybody that was team that had that helped us to make, create this workshop and thank you all. Thank you for all the support. So I would like just to to say goodbye to everybody <laughs> and, and thank and you. Before we do uh, maybe we could just ask anybody who is able to have their camera on. I know there's some that we haven't been able to. We'd love to be able to, to get a screen grab and um, yes. and we're very grateful for this time. And we also want to warmly welcome everyone to the 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 Bob family. And again, I want to say we uh, deeply appreciate this time, which has been invaluable, and greatly look forward to many, many more to come. 
And that collective uh, will get stronger with all of us a part of it. So thank you, everyone. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a screen grab if I can right now. Um, just one second. Thank you. And again, for any contacts, uh, I'll just move from pain to pain. So just give me one second, please. And I wanted to say any contacts we may not have already, if uh, you wouldn't mind um, sharing them, we would be honored to, to stay in touch with all of you and, um, and really take the vision that you've shared with us forward, which is uh, what is so invaluable. Thank you for the amazing le youth leadership we have here. And you are the present is the way that I would put it. So thank you all so much in a big, a big hand. And also I would like to thank everybody, the, all the, uh, organiza the young people that organized this, this workshop. I just wanted to let everybody know that this workshop was organized by young people to young people. So we can just stay connected and continue this like more stronger. Yes. Thank you. Use the buy-in for the young people idea in practice. And uh, I thank the organizers, I thank uh, facilitators, I thank Bas and UNOG for the opportunity, and I thank each one of you for your, your time and invaluable insight. Thank you. Well, stay in touch. Many thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Many thanks, Doctor.